Hi, welcome to another episode of Drum and Bass Arena Foundations, where we are telling the story of the very roots of this music and this culture. And there is no stronger foundation than the story of AWOL, truly a way of life. We've got three of the original artists who are on board for AWOL. We have got Mickey Finn, we've got Kenny Ken, and we've got the man like GQ. In a moment, guys, you are going to take me to paradise, literally. But first, let's set the scene. Let's set the scene. Let's tell me how all of this came together. And I believe the two people need a little big up, JP and Chris, the original promoters. So let's start right there and let's get right into the AWOL story and how it truly changed so many people's lives. I think we'll start with you, Gary. Okay, well... Welcome, ladies and gents, guys and girls. <laughs> <laughs> um, I knew JP and Chris and them guys from Southend uh, before AWOL and World Dance. They were putting on little parties uh, beyond therapy and other things over by um, the Silver City. Just little parties they were putting on all over the places and house parties and stuff. We used to hang out. There was a bunch of us, me, Richie Fingers, Frankie Bones, Tony Tracks, and stuff. And we used to meet up with those guys. Um, and we used to just put on these, they used to put on these little parties. We used to play for them. They had some clubs running in South End and stuff as well. Um, and they were just heading to do some great stuff. And JP, I think JP, the first time he met you, I think he kidnapped you and took you to South End. Yeah, he did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because it used to be a bunch of us. I mean, it used to be JP, Gary, uh, Sean, there was a firm of them, probably about seven of them, eight of them, um, who were all just party heads. And so they were putting on these little parties all over the place. Um, and out of that, you know, some some great things grew out of that. Um, and then, you know, we had the World Dances and then we had the AWOL, but they were always destined, that firm, that original firm, to do some great stuff, always. Brilliant. And how did you guys get involved? How do you two, Mickey, Mickey and Kenny, how do you guys kind of know JP and Chris then? Um, uh, how did I meet JP now? Uh, I think I met him at, was it Clink Street? I think I met him at Clink Street or somewhere like that. And um, he he told me that he was running this thing called, this new thing at Paradise Club called AWOL. And he wanted me, Mickey, Gary, I think it was uh, um, Frank, uh, what's his name again? Oh, I forget his name now. Trevor Fung. Trevor Fung, that's Trevor it, yeah. Fung, Trevor right. Fung, yeah. Mickey will remember everything. Yeah. But I said to JP, Trevor Fung. you have to get Mickey Finn and you have to get Kenny. I said yeah. to him, you have to get them man there because right. them man is popping off, right? Yeah, right. The, the original man. But here's the joke, Hear the joke. Hear the joke, right? I was, I had, I had, you know, back in the days we had the world of bookings every night, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I missed the first AWOL, right? The first ever one, I missed it, right? And they called me to the office in the week. So why did I miss it? And Jay said to me, Jay said to me, Ken, I don't want to get rid of you, but he wants to get rid of you, right? The other guy, Chris, right? Chris. So I went in and I just told him straight, listen, it was my fault. I was overworked and I just missed the booking, you know what I mean, right? So Jay was cool, but Chris weren't cool. But Jay weren't, Chris wanted to get rid of me, but Jay weren't having it. Jay said, Jay was adamant, he was adamant that I stay there, you know what I mean? So from that day, I never missed another <laughs> <after that. laughs> I never missed it, but you could have missed it though, because it was the thing that that time, it was the main place to be at anyway, you know yeah, what I mean? It was a hot spot. So, was yeah, different. it was a hot spot. You could have it missed was. that, you know what I mean? And I was kind of vexed that I missed the first one, you know what I mean? But, you know, because of Jay, Jay just was adamant that Kenny stayed, you know what I mean? And then Chris didn't really right. Kenny, man. You're mad. You know yeah, what I mean? You know what what I, mean? <laughs> I mean, what Jay said really, you know, I salute Chris because them guys made something, but Jay was the fireman. Do you understand what he was the man? Yeah, he was he was the man who said what was what, and, and that was that. Do you know what I mean? He put together a crack team with you guys, really, I didn't he? I mean, he Mickey, put... tell me about how kind of the team of you came together, because obviously it's yourselves, oh. um, Paul, Dr. S. Gache as well, Darren J. as well, and then Randall too. So tell me how it all came together, Mickey. I kind of didn't have no previous with JP. Uh, Gary and Kenny knew Jay. Uh, I didn't know Jay until Jay got on the phone and went, 
<laughs> and I put the phone down and my missus went to me how much snow did that geezer just sell to the Eskimo he was like <laughs> which I loved him I, Jay's a bit of me really so we yeah. got we got on like an house on fire I, I I used to work up north a lot and I didn't concentrate on London so much I would work in London <laughs> but I loved up north so he was basically on the phone off. I've got this idea for a residency and I want you to be a part of the team. And that was AWOL. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't say, even though it was busy, I, I, like, I don't know when it opened. It's got to be 91, 92, even though yeah. a lot of its power house days were like maybe 94 and 95 and 93. Yeah. But it kind of opened, you're talking kick drum era. Really. Yeah, yes. We're all playing still, if you want to say, you know, hardcore going into jungle techno. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It was like yeah. a kick drum, right? I, I mean, I was saying to Darren this morning, I can remember Lenny D coming over there and, you know, there's kick drum and then there's Lenny D just trashed the place. And I mm. think, you know, poor Lenny, he just cleared the dance floor because it was just way too hard. There was a few people that it, came in. Who, it, 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 yeah. Who had a little test run in there. I mean, yeah. Trevor was in there. He weren't in there for that long. Um, well, Trevor, he was part of the original team. Yeah, he was. A, he was a lovely guy as well. Yeah, Trevor Fung was part of the original. Yeah, he was the yeah. original team. But it was more. I think it was more based for what me and Mickey was on and what you was on, Gal. You know what I mean? It wasn't yeah. really because Trevor was on a different tip, wasn't he? He was. Really? A, he was a, I think it was the testing grant. It was testing yeah. at that period of time. Yeah, he, he's. You know, he was actually yeah. the bond, and it was going to stay like that. And Trevor came in um, because I remember speaking to Jay, he would say to me, like, who do you think, you know, at the beginning when he was starting it? Because, you know, who do you think we should get? You know what I mean? And I was saying, you know, he already was going to get Kenny. And I said, you need to get Mickey down there. Do you yeah. understand what I mean? Because, you know, Mickey Bomba Club Finn. Do you yeah. understand what I mean? Right? <laughs> <laughs> Club Finn. So you've got to get Mickey down there to make sure you read him. You know, other people just think, and I said that because when we went into Paradise Club, I was working with Richie Fingers, uh, Tony Trax, and all of them guys there, and it split. When we went in there, I was upstairs with them guys, and Richie and them lot was downstairs, downstairs yeah. playing the house with yeah. uh, Roy the Roach. Um, yeah, that's right. And, and a few other people down there. Yeah, because, um, I mean, that's a whole other story in it. That's where, that's the roots of UK Garage. That plays yeah. a story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, 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 it went in there, and it just it, it split. Certain man was upstairs, and then man there was downstairs. And, and the whole of the club, actually, if you went there, you was getting actually the best of the best music at that time. Yeah. You'd yeah. My house, you know, yeah. man was drawing some, you know, you get some, Gary Mason was downstairs sitting on the speaker, you know what I mean? God bless his soul and stuff. You yeah. Know I mean? Yeah. Like, there were people who was passing through. Do you know what I mean? It, it was a serious place, man. It was a serious place. Yeah, I used place. to go, I used to go, when I used to finish my set, I used to go downstairs and listen to some house as well. You know what I mean? Because that's how it was. That's how it yeah. was. You know what I mean? Oh, like, I hear good music. That's where we come from. Let's not get it twisted. Exactly. 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 That's right. We are, we are here because of house music. Yeah, that's right. I don't want to hear it, but... But it's the truth. It's the truth. It's the truth. It's the truth. You know, if we're going to look to a mother and she had loads of children, we're going to look to Acid House. That's yeah. right. Yeah, you that's right. Real. You should start having affairs with everyone. Yeah, and I'm still, I, I'm still playing that music to this day. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, house music, I've never lost my love for house music. You know what I mean? It's impossible, man. You know what I mean? Because you know we all I mean? come from that. I we all come from that and watch the transition from that. Yeah. In, you know what I mean? To where it is now. So yeah. it's like, if anybody, but hey, if anybody turned around and said, oh, about, you know, jungle, you'd have to say, well, you know, you'd have to go back. Do you understand what I mean? And yeah. talk about the transitions before it yeah. turned into what it, before it turned into that. That's and right. It's and it's important. But AWOL was the place where these transitions happened or one of the places where these transitions happened, really. And Paradise was accommodating for that, wasn't it? It was the type of club that had the type of vibe. And you managed that you grew a community that was thirsty for those transitions and those new sounds. It was a testing ground, wasn't it? But Paradise yeah. allowed that. It was a very special club, wasn't it? It had I, the right think, balance think, of everything. I think it was uh, the beauty of Paradise Club as well because... For me to host all of the guys, yeah, I could see, you know, every man weren't ramping in there. 
Everybody yeah, was nah. coming with the ammunition. Yeah. It was <laughs> stuff like central. All right. <laughs> and this week I'm like, all right, Kenny's gonna drop this dub plate. And Kenny come and box up with this dub plate. Mickey come with this dub plate. Right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Randall yeah. come with this dub plate. Darren come with this. It was dub plate central. Yeah, it was. It, like was. it was the testing ground. I even do you remember the sound clash when I had the sound clash, right? Yeah. I even I don't remember that. Well, what I was played that? at Paradise. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, I played at Paradise Club before. The set before that, I played at Paradise Club. And Paradise Club was my testing ground to see if I'd go and win the Sound Clash. And I tore down Paradise Club. And then I remember Randall and Goldie saying to me, don't come back without the belt, you know? Don't come back without the belt. <laughs> I remember that. I remember that. Yeah, it was a yeah. unique place, man. For me, you know, I'm hearing the living tunes every week. Yeah. And every man... In my mind, I used to say, all right, then, who's coming with the... Um, Who's coming with the headbutts today then? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> with the headbutts. Who's coming with the choppers? You know what I mean? And every, it, 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 you know what, though? No. It used to keep every man on their toes. It was a place where we could go and test out our new tunes. We could, we could, it, was, it was like, but all the producers used to give us their tunes to play at Paradise Club. That was the testing ground for the whole yeah. scene, as far as I'm concerned. Because we used to remember, we used to get people coming down from Manchester, Scotland, oh, Liverpool. Everywhere. Everywhere. Well, everywhere. At Wales, maybe. You think you can mostly go to every corner of the country and yeah. people coming now. And yeah. I was going to say, I think for a club to get that, there has to be a serious attraction. That yes. security team was yeah. red hot. Yeah. Fire. Yeah. You, yeah. You walked in that door if you got in because it did get <laughs> that state. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that, for real. That club got to a point <clears throat> where it had two shifts of people in a night, especially on the one o'clock end. Yeah. End, yeah. You know, you yeah. had a shift leave and you had another shift turn up. Bright That's as right. days at eight o'clock in the morning. And I That's think right. as they walked inside that door, the safety creates an energy in itself. Yeah, yeah. There was a serious community in that club. Yeah, 100%. Where you started saying hello to people because you just saw them week in, week out. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it was a serious family unit going on in there, even though not a lot of people knew each other, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And then you had an unbelievable system, you know, yeah. especially once <clears throat> I kind of rung Jay, I went, listen, dude, I played on this system. It's called Eskimo Noise. I don't know what it is, but it made my knees bend when the bass line come in. You've got to track him down. Once the Eskimo Noise rig went in there, it was... It's a different I thing. Once, my eyes were, I couldn't see Gary properly. My eyes were... <laughs> 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 I still be on a deck going, go on, see if you can keep your legs straight. And the bass line, I mean, my legs would just go at the knees. I know I'm getting yeah, old. Yeah, it was the spot, man. It was a great stand. Yeah, there. Paradise. Paradise was the spot back in the day. That was the number one spot. You can get, you can get a comp or a club that just everything comes together right. Yeah. Rage. I think the crowd, the crowd as well. The crowd. The crowd, yeah. Um, the crowd. You, you could not. The, the beauty of it is that the crowd was spoiled. So yeah. every week, without a doubt, until that club, from the club opened, until the whole of Paradise Club shut down, you would get tunes every week. And the every crowd week. was, they were super swell, that crowd. Yeah. They were swell, do you understand 100%. what I'm saying? And, and they were so swell. So if you was a guest DJ and you came, you had to be on your A game. Because <laughs> if, you came, if you came there and yeah. you were dropping rhythms, they would let you know. Yeah. Do you understand what I mean? You ain't getting no forwards too tough. It would be a little bit weak. You know, yeah. usually it's an army in there like that every week, yeah? Every weekend. And if you come in and you weren't dropping tunes you, and you weren't moving the crowd, it'd just be like a little bit kind of little fuzzy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean? that, that crowd for me was one of the most um, uniquest crowds because they used to get spoiled with good music. Um, Weekend, two hour sets, yeah. two hour sets, yeah. yeah. Two hour yeah. sets. I think it's almost like if you had a team that is absolutely the synergy and the flow of it's like just premiership, and then yeah. you take someone out and bring someone in from the Sunday League. Yeah, yeah. that's so wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, Mickey. No, no, no. I that's it. <laughs> that's it, bruv. <bro. laughs> <laughs> they mean to come across like that, but it's almost like. When the synergy was so tight with that, Kenny, Darren, Gashay, me, Gary, 
that week in, week out with that team. And then yeah. soon as someone come in, uh, and it could be a really big name, and I'm, I weren't bringing them down in any way, but you kind of really noticed the difference. Yeah. Well, well I, I remember. It's a bit I like remember. how Groove and Fabio had rage kind of locked, you know? Yeah. It was their baby. They knew what they wanted. Yeah. A bit like us, though. We knew what was going to attract the play. Yeah, yeah. You well, couldn't I, I, come in with nothing. If, Like I said, yeah, I told him I could run down the back-to-back -back one time in there, right? And I said to Ron, I said, listen, bruv, understand when you come in this place here, you know, <laughs> you better draw some rhythm. Because yeah. if you don't draw rhythm and you don't think, you're in problems. And I think for about a week, my man must have been rehearsing and getting tunes ready and thing. Because I said to him, I got him a bit nervous. <laughs> you know but mean? you know what, though? You know what, though? In saying that, though, right? Ron, when Ron done the back to back with Randall, right? To this day, that's one of the best back to backs I've ever he heard. He held it. Life. Yeah, man. He held it. He that's held one it. of the best back to backs I've he, ever he heard in my it. life. Trust he held me. it because he had to. I put fear in him. I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fear. You know what I mean? You have to understand when you come to this place here. Do you know what I mean? This is like the Mecca. Yeah, it's the Mecca, yeah. yeah. It's the Mecca. You oh, know, if I, you look to, if, I, if, I, if I see a couple of artists wobble down there. Oh, yeah, me too, on, me too, know, Ricky. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. don't want to go on. They don't yeah. want to go on. Like, because they're not ready. And I mean, you yeah. don't get that now. Do you know what I mean? You don't get that now. But you at that time... Do you I, remember... Hey, do you remember when we brought over Kevin Saunderson? I can't remember that. Can't you remember? We bought Kevin yeah. Saunders. Jay bought Kevin Saunders. And we, uh, we was going, nah, nah, Jay, ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. And he played the set and he cleared the dance floor. Do you remember that? You remember that? <laughs> what I'm saying. And I you felt sorry for him, man. Over. I really I mean, felt Jay was up. Jay was up for bringing over guests and stuff like that. Yeah. But I think everybody who knew they was going to come in there, they had to prepare themselves. I mean, the beauty yeah. about it is well, Paradise Club was that when people, when certain other artist DJs were playing their sets at different clubs, they would all come down to Paradise Club. So in the yeah. corner, you'd see Groove, you'd yeah. see Fabio, yeah. you might see this man and that, and they just stand and they're studying. Yeah. You know I mean, not only yeah. are they kind of partying and stuff, but they're also studying. They're studying, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, what's going on in this place here? But like, mm. when you come there, you're like, raw, okay. Do you know what I mean? Because the selection of men that you got there, for me, I'm working with all of these guys here and I'm saying to myself, rah, you know what I mean? Every man is drawing tunes. Yeah, it was like the A-team. It was the A-team, really. It was the A-team. It was the original yeah, like... A-team and the mixing credibility, yeah, in that club there was on a different level. Like uh, everybody come because everybody knew they had to come and, 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 and follow the man who played, you know what I mean, before them. You know, and the whole entire, this man's coming and trying to only mix for all half an hour. Right, <laughs> this man's coming and mixing like that. Gashe is mixing his girlfriends on his back like a rock sack. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, right. I'm telling you, like the best times of my life is in that. Yeah, club. yeah, yeah. Me you know too. I mean? Eight eight was the one. And I think because it was weekly as well, like Rage was, like Swerve was, like Sunday sessions, uh, uh, Blue Note. You know, it's these weekly things where you develop. That's where a culture starts, really. Where you, that's where you build up the community. Where you've got that, like you know, kind of routine of people arriving every week, yeah. and that's where you really. I mean, that's where you refine things all as DJs, really. Yeah. Well, it did for me. A yeah, Wall for me. A Wall just being a part of AWOL opened a lot of doors for me, like all around the world, you know, because... Yeah, for me too, man. AWOL me was too. worldwide by then, you know what I mean? And like, you, everyone was hearing about AWOL and like, because remember, it was, there weren't no um, uh, Instagram and, and Facebook and all that, you know what I mean? So right. everyone was going by cassette tapes and pirate cassette radio. Cassette tapes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And what, I mean, I've got what? a lot of gigs. I've got a lot of gigs. On the back of tapes. A, a through a, yeah, through yeah, yeah, exactly. On the back of tapes, I mean, me, yeah, yeah, through the tapes. I mean, look how long they tried to get me out of Canada for on the back of a tape with me and Gary. Yeah, because of my silly stuff I did as a kid, it took me about four years to get into Canada, and it 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 was all about this tape, I suppose. Cassettes were Mickey. Today, Mickey, so every time. Every time I went to Canada, right, they would say, we've got to get Mickey Finn out here, man. We need Mickey Finn. <laughs> Every time I went out there, it was Mickey Finn this, Mickey Finn that, Mickey Finn this. We've got to get that. all the tapes, but they didn't yeah, have Mickey Finn. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> that, that tape, that, the, those tapes there, them tapes, um, they've changed people's lives. Yeah, you know, 100%. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I still, I still, which is a beautiful thing, really. Um, people say, you know what, G, you don't think about it really 
deeply when people say that. You just kind of take it and think, oh, that's nice that you say that. Because yeah. I'm always happy when somebody says that. But when you really think about it, is that people who could, couldn't get to parties, you know, they would get these tapes. The yeah. tapes, yeah. So, yeah, the that's, tapes, that was yeah. me. Like. And, the, and the tapes, you know, international with them tapes went. Yeah. yeah. Some people were like, oh, that tape was my Bible, G. It was like the Bible. Yeah. But when you think about it, you think, wow, you really changed somebody's life. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, through music. They were the message system. They were the communication device. And your voice, Gary, and then obviously Fearless is as well. You know, these would guide us through any MC then, you know, on any rave tape, but especially the AWOL ones that we were hearing, you guys would guide us through, you know, and it would feel like we already knew before we'd come to a gig, before I went to my first rave, 95, 96, I felt like I knew a lot of you through these tapes. Uh, yeah. They were, you know, cool, they man. were really special for everybody, really. I mean, and then we move on to the CD then because one of the biggest you know we move in a couple of you've established yourself in paradise along the way on the bank holiday weekends a while ago so big you could fill up ministry of sound yeah. it was the first outside promotion to come in I believe it was all house and techno and all in house this was the yeah. first CD to be recorded in that way yeah. and again I mean I've got goosebumps <laughs> thinking about that CD man whoa, whoa, whoa. so tell, let's go back to the ministry of sound points now uh, uh, ministry, yeah, for me on. For me, Ministry of Sound, I couldn't believe that I was actually booked to play Jungle at Ministry of Sound. You know what I mean? It was like, wow, Ministry of Sound, you know, right? Oh, yeah. But when we went there, when I, I must admit, when I went there, I was a little bit nervous because, you know, it was Ministry of Sound, you know what I mean? But the crowd, we packed it out. I remember it was packed out to the, you couldn't even move in there. And like, you know, the the the, the applause you got when you, when you drawed, like a, a tune, you know what I mean? It was it was next level, you know what I mean? It was like, I think just for, I think like you said, Kenny, you know what I mean? The ministry was a big place. Yeah. You know, and, and, and you know, it's ministry of sound. So yeah. for us to bring that, for Jay to bring the whole of the firm over there, well, we're all yeah. the firm anyway, but to bring yeah. that, because when he said to me, oh, you know, gee, I think about doing ministry of sound and all of that, I think we're going to make it work. And, you know, and yeah. I'm like, I'm like, what? <clears throat> I'm like, ministry is like, yeah, do you know what I mean? I've got ministry in that. And if you know JP, he speaks like, Mickey would tell you, Kenny would tell you, it's like 100 mile an hour, his brain's yeah. working. Yeah, we're going to yeah. do ministry. We're going to do that like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm like, bro, it really? And he goes, yeah. You know what I mean? I'm getting ministry. We're doing it. Da, 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 da. We're going to bring that over there, gal. We're going to do that like that. We're going to show them. We're going to show them, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and I'm yeah, like, all yeah. right, cool. And then I was thinking, yeah, whatever. And then I'm like, rah, he's got ministry of sound. He's got ministry of sound. Got ministry yeah. of sound. Yeah. And, like, and like Kenny said, you know what I mean? Um, I think for all of us to be playing, hey, hey, Mickey's got the thing there, love up there. I <laughs> want to <laughs> ministry. Look at that. Do you know what I mean? Go on, Mick. Yeah. <laughs> I think for all of us um, to go in ministry and play that, you know, music in ministry was a big deal for all of us. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm yeah. set man, set man, could even get in ministry of sound. Do you know what I mean? Let yeah. alone go and play in there. Do you understand what I mean? We're and talking about the most powerless, most probably the, the most powerless nightclub in the country at that point. Yeah, it was. It was. It was. And if I'm, my memory serves me well, which it don't nowadays, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure the first one, before he actually started going back there on a Thursday night, <coughs> I'm sure the first one was a Christmas night. Yeah, yeah, Mick. Yeah, was I think it, it was right. a Boxing yeah. Day. I think it was a Boxing Day, wasn't it? Yeah, I think yeah, it was around about Christmas time. Yeah, I think you're right, Mick. It's like, mate. It was when did we do the album? When, when, like, when did we do the album? The album was Christmas? once he started going in there on a Thursday night. Once he that really popped off, as you can imagine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> remember when when the uh, who was the in the name of my father about Jerry Connellan was upstairs in the VIP and Paddy and they had a. I just can remember a big dust in a drink. Do you remember? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm on about a proper bin, like just went and must have bought full up a drink. Worth of spirits, <laughs> filled his bin up, and just stayed there hugging it in the VIP all night. <laughs> I think that worked first, and then Jay went. We got. A, I don't. It weren't every Thursday, was it? Or was it? I think, I think it was, was monthly every, one. No, it wasn't every Thursday. No, no. Every month. I think it was once a month, wasn't it? Yeah, once a month. 
Yeah. But did it? It didn't lose this vibe. It didn't lose this community. All of those like loyal followers who are coming down to paradise and stuff. That special vibe. Like ministry could have diluted that or mainstreamified that in any way. But you still had that special vibe. Uh, no, you, yeah, sounds as yeah, well, yeah, didn't you? yeah, that same vibe. Oh, you know what? I think. Like you're also talking. Of, you're also talking in the era where the ministry of sound didn't have no well-being brand. It had yeah. never released a record before, so it was a cool underground club in the Elephant and Castle. Yeah, the lifestyle stuff <laughs> that they now do was not on the radar. Obviously, it. I don't know, but I don't know if it was that live album because that was the first recording that had one been done in the club, and it was the first recording. Ministry only even got that on their catalogue system. Yeah. It really yeah. is that far beyond when they were releasing records at that point. We was yeah. with, some dude just turned up with a portable studio after we'd done the live recording and we just started mixing it down in, in the back room of the ministry. Yeah. Right. That album was boom as well, though. That album, that album worldwide as well. You go to Australia, you see that yeah. album in Australia, you go to America, anywhere, and you see it all over the place, man. You know what I mean? People yeah. bring it out and say to me, Ken, do you remember this? Like, I'm in Australia. Do you remember this? I've got something for you. Do you remember? Where'd you get that from? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's selling over here as well. You know what I mean? In Australia. You know what I mean? So it just yeah, shows you how big that. AWOL was, man. AWOL was massive, man. Really, really massive. Yeah. Uh, you know what? what I, mean? I, I, I always like, for me, like me and JP, we had a personal relationship anyway. Do you know what I mean? Before yeah. the parties. And that guy, Changed a lot of people's lives. Do you know what I mean? Oh, 100%. He changed exactly. a lot of people's exactly. lives. And, and and he doesn't get enough credit for it. He yeah. doesn't even want the credit for it. Do you understand what I mean? He's not bothered. Jay ain't bothered. He's not bothered at all. And every time I speak to him, like, you know, we have our chats, I always say to him, oh, you know, Jay, you know, somebody was talking to him about AWOL and blah, blah, blah and stuff. And I said, you don't understand. Do you know what I mean? With the AWOL, the world dances and stuff like that, you changed so much people's lives. Do you know what mm. I mean? To, to, to this day, like, you know, Abel was years ago. World Dance was years ago. Yeah. People still talk about it now. The day, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, you know, you change, you know, but people say, oh, you know, every week I was there with that fell. Every week I'd come up there. Yeah. I'd never miss a thing. It don't matter if I've got to find a babysitter. I'll find a babysitter every week. <laughs> <but there's, you laughs> know, it's like, you know, and he doesn't get enough credit and, for and, the input. Just just go, oh, just one of many great I He's just a trailblazer, isn't he? If you kind of yeah. think, no one was yeah. doing two-hour sets, no one had a team, he done it and made it successful. Yeah. No one could get into the ministry. He started doing stuff, you know, in the ministry. Yeah. Done the live album before. You know, he's just, he just groundbreak after groundbreak. And that, we haven't even got to lid yet. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. There you go. Yeah, when we got yeah, go. or, or the stuff that he did Liv. in um, the O2 arenas as well. Like I feel there was yeah. one Ministry of Sound, which was like 45,000 people or something like that. Like he has, he's got a track record of that. But let's talk about the team. Let's talk about the other members who aren't available to be on this call. Randall. Well. Big no. up everybody was... No, no, because <laughs> I mean I've lost count of the amount of times that Andy C just as an example has told me about being down and you know kind of worshipping Randall for example is you know his own personal influence he's told me Gary about a time when people were called for a rewind on one of your bars you went in on something and you had to do a rewind on one of your bars Andy <laughs> told me you know you've got the no, biggest no, no, artist no, in the world no. to come through the school of AWOL like yeah oh, Andy, was oh, with his, Andy was there with his long hair yeah. You know what I mean? Like meatloaf. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's no ponytail in that. We used to have conversations where he said to me, you know, him, Red One, they would be there and just, like he said, it used to blow his mind. Do you know what I mean? Just to yeah. watch them do their thing. Um, and it's quite amazing when you, you know, when he's saying that because you, we all know, you know, what he's, what he's done, you know, musically. So when you get somebody like that turn around and say, you know, gee, like, I, I never used to miss it. Every week he'd be there, you know, smashed up. <laughs> I mean, but really enjoying himself and learning as well and listening yeah. to all of these amazing DJs, you know, do what they do. And it's pretty cool to hear him say that, you know, considering... And you know what? He, you know what? He shows us all respect to this day. Yeah. yeah you see, yeah, you know what I mean? He shows us all respect to this day because always, every time, I, if I phone him, like when he does... Like the first time he done Wembley, 
I think I hadn't spoke to Andy for about a good few months, you know what I mean? Must have been about maybe a year, right? And when he done Wembley, I called him at the blue and I said to him, Andy, I need a guest list. Ken, no problem. Now, there's certain DJs won't pick up their phone, yeah, right? You try and call them, right? But Andy, he answered it straight away. He went, what's happening, Ken? Geese? No, what's happening, Geese? That's like, yeah. what's, yeah. what's happening, Geese? <laughs> <laughs> and then he got me and then he said, no problem, you know what I mean? So, you know, respect to him, you know what I mean? But the rest of the crew, it was when Randall came to AWOL, right? For me, when Randall came to AWOL, he was on some different tip, right? The way he used to play his music, right? And for, I'm just talking about me personally, right? It made me step up my game, right? When Randall came to AWOL, right? When I'd done the first back-to-back with Randall, people were saying to me, and you're fucking mad. He's going to bury you. He's this, 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 that, da, 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 right? <clears throat> I said, I don't Something care. Like a bit of positivity, eh? <laughs> yeah, Elliot, you know what I mean, Mick, right? They said, yeah, they said, yeah, Kenny's going to bury you. He's going to this, he's going to that, right? So anyway, the first back-to-back we've done, yeah, he went in on me. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. He did go in, right? Kenny you held your big... ground, bruv. You hold your ground. Yeah, bro. I held my ground. I held my ground. But Randall went in, though, right? Because then remember, he had them reinforced boys behind him. You know what I mean? Yeah, they were yeah. you know what I mean, right? So. But the second back-to-back we done now, I said, that ain't happening again, you know. Watch this now. <laughs> <laughs> so Kenny let his tyres down. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's how Paradise was. Uh, Paradise, Paradise was a thing like, if Mickey, if I went there one week and I heard Mickey Finn play, and I heard Mickey Finn tear down the place, and some of the tunes I ain't heard before, I made it my business to find out what tunes they was. Even if I had to go around his house and sit down with him and have a cup of tea. That's the beauty about it, you know what I mean? And that's why I'm saying it was so special because every DJ who played, they would have to be on their A game. Yeah, 100%. They wanted to play as good as the other person. That's why you never had anybody who played rubbish over there. No, no, Everybody, There was nobody. Everyone was on point. Everybody was on point because people went and done their homework. Mickey coming yeah. there with some dub plate sometimes. I said, blood clot, where Mickey get that from, yeah? And Mickey then, you know, being the DJ. You know what I mean? He coming there with Tinder. Yeah, put the club in, right? Kenny come with his thing now. I said, right, all right then. So who's next then? So, you know what I mean? Randall come with one thing then. Gache come with it. Darren come with like, everyone's coming with dub plates. Yeah. So, you know I mean, your VIPs, pure specials. And I'm saying to myself, because I'm not a DJ. I'm an MC. But I'm saying to myself, Ross, that man's not messing up. You know what no, I mean? Mate. You know, no, so, no. I don't know, man. It, it, I, mean, it was... I mean, and, and just to go on that, Dave, right, I don't know I can only speak for myself, but I could play something that I know a million percent Gary's never heard before in his life and he'll read it like a book. Yeah, oh, yeah. There weren't, a lot, of MCs, there weren't a lot of MCs out there and I know a million percent he's never heard this tune on. He would shut up when the, the vocal come in. He just could read it like a book. And yeah. I think, Obviously, that's why the team loved working with him. You know, I know. Some hello, guys hello. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do like 10 hours. I was uh, going to say, you were the hardest working man out of all of them, really, Gary, because you were. You were the MC for the whole session until. Yeah, I don't the know night how he done it, though. Extended. Yeah, I mean, you know what, JP, you have to show JP and tell him, but well, he owes me some money, Rust stuff, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, I know, Ken, if you remember, there was a geezer standing next to him, looked like Pablo Escobar. Or was it Pablo Escobar? <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. No, he did. He had. You know what, yeah, I think like. I was I think, to him the other day, you know, we worked around you because he almost was the centre pole for the tent. Yeah, no, for real. You know, he was for there real. all night. We were coming in as his guests, so to speak. We weren't. We were part of the team, but yeah. we were part of the team. He, he, was, yeah. he was the totem pole for all of us. I think yeah. at that time there, I think doing all of them hours, you know, when I think about it, I, I was just really enjoying myself. Um, yeah. I was really enjoying myself because, you know, when Paradise finished and, you know, and we was doing some other work, I was only doing an hour. And in my mind, I was like, right to the hour. Is that it? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm saying sweet. You know what yeah. I mean? I'm saying, y'all could do enough dances then. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Because when I heard certain man MCs, they're moaning about, ah, oh, I've got to do two hours and all of that. I'm saying to myself, bruv, two hours. Man was doing 10 hours. Yeah. You understand what I mean? Yeah. So for yeah. me, two hours or hour, 
I was a dodo. I'm like, I could do that. I could be back in my yard eating flipping Rice Krispies. I'm like, this is no problem. <laughs> you understand what I mean? It's, it's, it's nothing. But if I think about it now, I, you know, because me and Jay had a conversation about it one time and I was laughing. I said, bruv, you know what? You owe me some back pay, you know, bruv. You know what I mean? You owe me some back pay, right? I said, 10 hours and all that. I said, what man do you know who does 10 hours? That Listen, they be screaming nowadays. I mean, people MCs nowadays. What I mean. And that was like... <clears throat> I think the difference is, I don't know, I can only give my opinion. Gary was a comp pair for the night. Yeah. I mean, that was sometimes just that's the word. Off, I don't know, we get to 7, 8 in the morning when we're doing that red eye 1 o'clock. He just yeah. turned the mic off, put it in his pocket, go and get a drink, and no yeah. one missed the beat. Because, yeah. it, it, I don't know, I don't want to, the motor mouse, let's call on the fast time. Gary was a bit more of a, a comp pair. It yeah. complimented the music. It weren't like, let me hear Gary's voice, let me hear Gary's voice, let me hear, it's like an onslaught of MCs. I just think Gary got in pockets. and No, Gary got it 100% and right. Adding the spice in all the right places. Yeah. He got it 100% uh, right. Because like Mickey said, he, he, Gary don't know, remember, Gary don't know what we're bringing to the table every week. You know what I mean? He don't know the new beats that we're bringing to the table every week. But he used to ride them like, like he knew them, like he's heard all of them before. You know what I mean? And like, that's special, you know what I mean? I think, I think for myself, because when you're working with like really great DJs and stuff, great artists, and if you're playing good music, um, I, I listen, I listen to music differently. Like when I was a you, I wanted to be a DJ. Do you know what <laughs> I mean? It never worked out. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I became an MC, but I always was right. So I used to listen to music differently. Do you understand what I mean? So when I hear them mm. guys playing their music. I'm saying, right, gee, you need to squeeze in there. Come out there. Sometimes I used to beat myself up. I'm like, oh, you've just done it too much over that. I used to be really critical because I want people to hear what them guys are playing. Yeah. I also want to try and, you know what I mean, orchestrate it a little bit, but know where to drop out and let that roll out and then come in there, roll out for 16 or thing there, or just host it there. But I was just trying to li- work it out how people would like to listen to music. So, and so, not only that, gal, not only that as well, though. Another thing I know I, re- I remember about AWOL is that you was funny with it as well. I used to give two jokes, yeah, you used to get enough joke really. on the mic as well. You know, what I mean? <laughs> you know, what, um, you know my character, mind you don't slip, mind you don't slip, trip, bust your lip. Yeah, you bust all the time. Oh, mate. <laughs> well, what, was it? what was it? Who was it? Um, who was it? He was shy, Archie. You wanted, <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you'd get all, you'd get all, you'd get all the crew in there, man. That was the yeah. thing about it as yeah. well, because there were so much different crews. Was the 49ers and all that there as well, Mick? Do you remember the 49ers? There's a bit of firm, I think that was from South London, but they was always there. Lean up, you know what I mean? Yo, <laughs> drink, man, man. You know what I mean? Well, you want a drink, do you know what I mean? It's, 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 no, I'm right. There used to be loads of different pockets of crews. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But, but no, no problems. Yeah, no problems. Have a good time, you know. Leave all that at the door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There was no yeah, problem. That's right. We never had no problems in no there. No problems at all. That. And you no problems do anyway because the security would let you know. The security was on point. It yeah, was on point. Yeah, they weren't having none of it. They were firm but fair, very fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah very fair. Like, yeah. Talking about a time, Dave, where like you no social media. Yeah. You got a brick mobile phone is your means of communication. That's uh, right. Really. So I don't know about Kenny, but I would have the boys that made Champion Sound. I got home from Friday night and they were sitting outside my house half six in the morning. They'd been working all night on Champion Sound. They drove straight down from Oxford because they want Mickey to play it Saturday night. Nah, go on. <laughs> or, or, or That's dedication, isn't it? That's dedication. I used to get man calling me to the studio. Come yeah, to the studio and hear this tune. We've got this tune. Like, I remember one time, remember when Stretch made that tune? Um, what's it called? The Frankie Paul thing. Uh, what's it called again? Anyway, Stretch was made, made this tune. Why was in the dance? Yeah, oh, dance, it's a right? big tune, man. Yeah, big when tune. Stretch made that, right? Stretch called me. I said, Stretch, oh, yeah, just, yeah, I'll play it. But now you've got to do me a special that too, though, because it's AWOL, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's AWOL, right? And I remember when that tune got first drawn at AWOL, that. Blew the roof off the place, like yeah. so many other tunes. Big tune, man. Yeah, you yeah, know what I mean? Oh, mate. You know what I mean? We used to get producers calling me, Ken, we want you to listen to this tune. 
I want you to test it out at AWOL. Everybody wanted to get their tune. Yeah. 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 Out of a bite oh. AWOL. Yeah. Okay. Everyone wants their tunes at AWOL. That's when, wicked. So we're going to kind of wrap up a little bit now, but from just like from what we've been talking about, this is where like dub plate culture was really honed by a lot of you and that kind of competitive edge and really pushing each other. This is where MC culture, because this was such a new music. Gary, this is where you refine the craft and put down the benchmarks for where MC should be and what MC should be doing. This is where like, you know, it's one of the very few nights, the weekly nights where so many aspects of our culture that we hold dear to us and are unique to jungle drum and bass. Now, this is where you guys were all sharpening your pencils. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. Because I, I, I'm, I'm sure Kenny agrees. Sometimes, Dave. Honestly, we were coming out of cutting houses, and the birds were singing, mate. We'd been in it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, to it, and it, I can only speak for myself, but it. I just wanted the fresh gear. It weren't about me battling other people. Hmm. No. Nah. It, it just so much good music in office yeah. here and the only yeah. way that you've got a chance to plan it the weekend is to go and get dubs cut you know we were yeah. coming out we got so into it we were going to buy our own blank dub plate boxes oh yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> with, with blank dubs so yeah. you know we'd go and buy boxes of them at a time Transco <laughs> yeah we'd go down to Transco yeah yeah I sussed out who was importing them and I flew yeah. into them. I'm, I'm sure it was you that gave me the link as it goes. You know that? Because yeah, it got that serious, Dave, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, got, yeah. it got really serious. Then you were trying to find out who's the best cutter out of everyone. Music House was the pinnacle of the dub plates, but yeah. it was because we could all just turn up there and get yeah. you sh- If you're looking for the master crafter, you must really be looking at Stuart at Copy Masters. But his time was very valuable and you couldn't get into him as much as... And as when, when Stuart at Metropolis, me. Yeah, but he, like, Metropolis took him. They nicked right. him from Copy Masters. Right, okay, okay. <laughs> Cut yeah, yeah. Copy Masters, but he was so good that Metropolis offered him a partnership. And yeah, that's right. Sorry, Metropolis, but you did. <laughs> <laughs> that was how cutting edge it was that was how all on the cutting edge you were and how new and fresh and exciting and you were just forging into this like not really kind of knowing where it's going but right pushing that wave and just being with it really and being right on the cutting edge what you got that's where it was what you got to remember as well though it was financially it was it was it was costing us a lot of money spent on dub plates every week because i'm yeah. talking you're talking about sometimes 500 pound sometimes a grand on just on dub plates, you know what I mean? And it was a lot of money to be spending on music. They, then today, the kids have got it easy. All they've got to do is just fling it on their, on their pen drive and that's it. And they've got to go and play it in the club. But we have to go... Hey, you got that grand, you know what I mean? You're still out, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> no, we live, I suppose, uh, a drinker. It'd be like a slate at a pub. We would have slates here, a tick. Yeah, you know, if you went there and yeah, cut me them dubs, just put it on me bill, Chris, and yeah. come the end of the week, month, whatever, you know, I'll oh, don't it out. know, just take it. <laughs> but it, yeah. Yeah, it, it was serious dub play culture. Yeah, serious dub play culture. I mean, real. thirty years of AWOL now. This is the thirtieth of year. I mean, what, what? What's your most precious memory, right? We're going to leave on this one because we've all got to go now. We're all busy men. But in in order, Mickey, Gary, then Kenny, just your first memory that comes to mind of just what what made AWOL special and why you're so proud to be part of that, really? Uh, I don't have a particular moment, you know, a particular night in there. I just, for me, it was every weekend in there was an uh, honour to be in there, um, to be representing uh, with an amazing group of DJs and one of the most amazing crowds that I've ever, um, you know, worked with. Because the crowd and the DJs, it was all one thing. Do you know what I mean? The DJs played to the crowd, but the crowd were there every weekend, without doubt, and that made us all a special unit. Do you know what I mean? So that's my thing. Anyway. <coughs> oh, that's beautiful, man. That's beautiful. Kenny. I, 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 or I'm, Mickey. Oh, I mean, I've look, I'm friends with Gary and I, I kind of met Gary. I knew Kenny before. Uh, 
but I'm still friends with Gary, for example, and I met Gary through AWOL, really. And you met some great friends. I think it had an unbelievable community in that club. Like, if you was troublesome and you looked like they, the, the security weren't having it in there, and I, I love that it brought a great energy out of people. Amazing sound system. Personally, I don't think the club, when they went to Victoria, it was about paradise for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Great yeah. Old, as paradise ever again once it left paradise. Yeah, mm. you're right. There was right. Some good nights at Victoria, but it kind of never touched. Paradise was something special that everything just clicked. Uh, you're right, mate. And, and it, it, it was a lead up, you know. It, it, if you was in the drum, drum bass and you wanted a good night, go away, well. And if you mm. got serious energy, I mean, I can remember it, this memory will stay with me forever. So the DJ used to be here, and there was an exit right there, Dave. And on the one o'clock session, I don't know if you ever went AWOL or anyone watching, <laughs> but just about 150 foot away was a market. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> on the Sunday, that market opened. And I remember looking at the exit once, and I see two old deers there with bags of shopping just looking <laughs> <laughs> at side and just had a look on their faces like, what the fuck? <laughs> with steam coming at the club. <laughs> and that would never, ever leave me, mate, them two old uh, deers to fruit for Sunday dinner. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. And Kenny, sign out now. Give us a um, memory treasure memory. For me, well. for me, like Gary said, I ain't really got no, nothing special because every week was special. Yeah. Every time you went to AWOL, it was special. You know what I mean? But for me personally, it was a game changer for the scene and it was a game changer for my career. Most you know definitely, I mean? man. Well, that's that. That's that. That's that. I could put that down to AWOL, you know? That's amazing. It was a game changer for jungle drum and bass culture, full stop. Thank you so yeah, much. And yeah. big ups to all of the other residents and everybody else who was part of AWOL as well. But a special big ups for you three for joining us on this call and telling us oh. the AWOL story. It's been amazing. I wish this conversation could carry on for longer. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Right, take care. Take care. <laughs> take care. Thanks for your time, take care. Bye.